so nearly went to the wire. China's Liu Hai Tao dominated the early exchanges, racing into a 6-2 lead, but Niels Fein fought back to trail only 7-6. With the tension mounting, Liu held firm though, coolly winning rack 14 to complete victory and claim the first semi-final place in the Masters. The second quarter featured the title holder, Shane Van Boning, against Wally Brasier. The American ran up an early lead, leaving the man from Qatar in trouble. He managed to claw back to within a rack of the champion with a golden break. His luck ran out, as Van Boning took the next two to reach the last four. The third quarter final featured two Moscone Cup veterans going head-to-head, -head, Darren Appleton and Johnny Archer. In this winner breaks format, the danger of one man running away is ever-present. Appleton had a fast start, leading 4-1 before a mistake allowed Archer back into the match. It became a closely fought battle, with Appleton finally grabbing the initiative in the latter stages to play his semi-final appearance. Germany's Ralph Suke was chasing a record-breaking 7th Masters title. He faced Mark Gray, an Englishman playing in Manchester for the last remaining semi-final spot. Despite his vast experience and early lead, Suke was no match for Gray's dogged persistence. The German led 4-1, but Gray stuck to his task, drawing level after 12 racks, then pulling away to claim a major scalp and place in the last four. Confirmation of the lineup. An Englishman is sure to figure in the final, with Mark Gray and Darren Appleton facing each other. Then in the top half, Liu Hai Tao takes on defending champion Shane Van Boning, attempting to become the first man to win back-to-back -back Masters titles. I have a lot of confidence now. I've been working on my game last night and early this morning. Uh, I've been practicing, you know, about four or five hours total before my last match. And uh, I'm, I'm building a lot of confidence now. Getting used to the atmosphere. I know the table very well. The table's playing good. Um, I just got the feel of the table and built more confidence. Well, a lot of players are trying to figure out the break and, you know, there's certain gaps in the, in the rack. Um, everybody's getting the same rack, it's just uh, they need to figure out how to hit the ball properly. Um, and that's the key. So, uh, I kind of know what to do in, uh, in my next match and, you know, I'm just going to have to figure it out. Feels great to be, you know, I win two matches and then get in the semifinals, and um, it's it's an honor to be in the semifinals and hopefully be in the finals of the World Pool Masters. I just hope I can do my best, and and then I think if I play good, I will have the chance to win. Sometimes I will feel nervous, but uh, after that I will try to find some way to calm down myself and to adjust myself. I didn't think about any strategy to beat him. Uh, I just believe if I play good, then I will have the chance to win. Well, a mouth-watering semi-final for you. Shane Van Boning, our defending champion, taking on Lu Hai Tao, the USA versus China. Carl, box office boys, joining me in the booth. And Carl, if not for that shocking Aaron eight ball, this could have been you instead of Lou. Shane Van Boning wins the lag. Yes, Ted. Let's not dwell on the past, pal. <laughs> <laughs> we know you don't want to talk about it. But no, I don't uh, mind. I'm sure don't we'll mind. we'll we'll. Uh, 
bring it up occasionally in, in, in terms of, you know, how to handle pressure and, and, and this kind of situation and how to stay focused. Now, Shane Van Boning wins the lag, and this is so vitally important. First it's track, a, race to eight, winner breaks. Shane Van Boning the break. Nigel Reese said race to eight, but it's, the key is, is that it's winner breaks. Look at that uh, soft break right there. And that was sort of a medium speed break and a nice uh, first shot by Shane Van Boney. What, what do you think about the way he hit that rack, Carl? Yeah, I mean, as we, as we see again, he's uh, clearly going for the one ball in the side pocket. Uh, pretty much what a lot of the players are trying to do this week. And once you find it, you know, it works really well. But Shane hits the rack more at a medium speed, where most of the players have been slamming it as hard as possible. Yeah, he's uh, obviously been practicing that, and you know he's got the feel for the shot. Well, this looks to be an ideal start for the American. Yeah, you can see there, Shane's still using that, you know, extra long cue, probably one of the longest cues on tour. Few players have been trying that over the last year or two. Yeah, what do you what do you make of that? Uh, what, what's that all about? I think it just gives him uh, a better feel for the shot. Helps you go through the cue ball a bit better. I think Earl, Stick, Earl, Earl Strickland started it off, and a few players have tried it out, and you know, gone back to the regular regular stick. But he's obviously stuck with it, and he likes it. Well, Shane a said after his last match, an 8-5 uh, win over Qatar's Walid Majid, that he felt a lot more comfortable than he did in his first match, an 8-6 win over Canada's John Mora. Just lost the cue ball a bit there. I mean, a lot of players have been doing that this week. The table's so quick. Just seems to keep running and running. He's left with a little tester here. Extension call. First frame. This will settle him down if we can just stroke this in. Right in the heart of the pocket. An ideal start for our defending champion here in the semifinal. Shane Van Boning leads 1-0 over Lou Hightow. Shane will be breaking in rack number two. Winner breaks format. And uh, boy, when Shane, his breaking ability is really going to, I mean, could be the difference. He is... Uh, he he's really seems to have it down more than a lot of the players here. Yeah, I think uh, when Shane won this tournament last year, Ted, himself and Nikos, back two. throughout Shane all the players, One -nil. they were definitely the best breakers. And you see that a lot in a lot of the tournaments. You know, the, the guys who have figured the break out the quickest seem to go the furthest. And there you see it again, the one ball straight in the side pocket. Put a little more mustard on that one. A little bit unlucky there. He could have done with, without kissing the two ball there. And he might have had a shot. Now there's no real shot here. So he's going to have to play safe. Interesting fact to take note of. I'm not sure if Shane is aware of this. But in the 20 two-year history of the Whirlpool Masters. No player has ever defended their title successfully. Never, never has there been a repeat champion. Wow. That's amazing. Just playing a safety shot here. Using the eight, bit of distance, get a good cue ball. Needs the two to slow up though. And it's just run out. I mean, you can see it, but this is not easy. You got a good cue ball there. You can see he's just off straight. And when it's your first shot at the table, this is not exactly the first shot you want. Well, the other side of that coin is that Lu Hai Tao has really impressed 
the fans here in Manchester in his first two matches. Yeah, he's a very good cueist, to be fair. And there you see it, heart of the pocket. Didn't really risk anything else there. You could see where he's left the cue ball. Obviously, prefers to sort of play that shot at that pace where, you know, a lot of players might have played that a bit harder to come back up for the three, but obviously he just wanted to make sure he got the pot. That was, you know, the number one thing there. Another similar shot, really. Another tough shot here. Oh, just caught the near jaw. Didn't hit it terrible. But just caught the near jaw. And on these diamonds, they, they, they stay up. And you see just the near jaw. Well, this is a uh, big opening now for Shane Van Boning. Yeah, he's, snoo he's snooking him, but he's just going to go off the top cushion. And you see he's just coming around to have a look. Just wants to make sure. Now, the next object ball will be the pink four in that general area, the one that's blocking the three. Yeah, so he's got to be quite soft with this. Yeah, he's played it well. to be another good start for Shane Van Boning. He got out of the blocks quickly against Qatar's Walid Majid, then stumbled and uh, allowed Walid to claw back into the match. But at the end of the day, Van Boning just had too much class for the Qatari. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's said himself he's not really played that, that well this year, but, you know, he's still in the tournament. And knowing Shane... The further he goes in the tournament, the better he starts producing. So I won't be shocked if he puts on a fine performance in this match. Well, when he won the Whirlpool Masters in 2014, he ended it with a brilliant performance against Nikos Economopoulos, winning the final 8-2. to two. So the nine goes. Excellent queuing. From Shane Van Boning. And he leads Lu Hai Tao 2 to 0 in this semi final. Welcome back to the opening semi final in the Masters between title holder Shane Van Boning and China's Lu Hai Tao. The American won the lag and went on to secure the opening two racks. This is now the third, with commentary from Ted Lerner and Carl Boyce. Shane Van Boning's the kind of guy that when he gets in sight of the finish line and the big prize and the trophy and the check, he really turns up the heat. Yeah, I mean, you see there, another fantastic break. Three identical breaks, really. Same pace, cue ball coming off the side cushion, one ball, straight in the middle pocket. And this time he's got a shot on the two ball. Well, he really plays those finesse shots real nicely. Yeah, he's... Uh, I think he's got to top this one through. Yeah, he's got an angle there. He's all right. Back up for the three. In the top left pocket. Played it nice. Well, there's the rack right there. This is a dream, dream start for Shane.
Over the course of this 22 years, the history of the Whirlpool Masters, two champions have made it to the final in the subsequent year and lost. Do you know which two, Ted? Ralph Suquet, Alex Laley. Alex Laley. I will confirm that. I believe you, for Ted. You. I would have said Ralph would definitely have been one of them. Six time champion. An amazing feat that is, really. And just as in, he did in his quarterfinal match against Walid Majid, Shane Van Boning off to a quick start, up three to nil. The semifinal race to eight, Shane Van Boning three, Lou Hightow, a goose egg. This is a textbook pool. Brought to you by the great American Shane Van Boning and Lou Hightow. Just a spectator after that missed three in rack number two. He's been sitting there in that nice, comfortable chair. Yeah, I mean, this is pool for you. I mean, he's not done much wrong, to be fair to him. You know, he's he's had one visit to the table. He put in a great two ball. It's a good three ball, to be fair. He didn't hit it terrible. Just caught the near jaw. Three rack four. It's three nil down. Going to break. Leading three racks to nil. And perhaps ominously for Lou, He's watching a guy who is a student of this shot right here, this break shot. Yeah, let's see if we can get four on the trot. And there you go. He's One really got this breakdown. Tremendous breaking. Gary Windass. I mean, this is... This is, there's some dark clouds on the horizon for Lou Hightow right now. Shane's confidence is just building by the minute. Yeah, he's a big confidence player, Shane. You know, I've played him many times over the years. I've watched him play in all the tournaments around the world. Watched him play big money games and when things are going his way and he's relaxed, he's a, he's a tough man to beat, let me tell you. How about that shot right there? That was not easy. Made it look easy to get position, maintain position on the four after that combination. Just be interested to see how he plays this one. Yeah, he's spinning it round. I think he just hesitated a little bit because, like I said before, the table's that quick. He's probably thinking, do I just try and float it in and leave a longish five or, you know, shall I go around the table? You see, he's landed a little bit funny on it, I think. He's got to put a bit of a draw stroke on this just to come back past the eight. Yeah, he's hit it well, though. Good shot. I guess when you're, when you're playing great and everything's going your way and you're you're building up your lead and you got that confidence brimming and you're it, how much of a tendency is there to then start taking chances yeah you do i mean obviously it's such a field game and you know we, we all know sort of the, the right shot and the wrong shot and whatever else but when you're practicing obviously there's no pressure and you just you know you walk around your table at home or in your club wherever you practice and it all just looks dead easy but then when you get out there you know, you've got the nerves, you want to do well, you know. Everybody's watching. It, it's, it is a different game out there, do you know what I mean? And you try and prepare the best you can, but the only real preparation you can have is winning tournaments and matches out there, really. Three break and runs, and Shane Van Boning out to a 4-0 lead over Lou Hightow in this semi-final. This is the first time in this year's Whirlpool Masters that we have seen anybody come out of the blocks like this. Oh, it's just at the right time for Shane Van Boning. So obviously, 
you want to, I mean, even if you're, you're think, thinking you're Superman and you can do everything, you still got to remind yourself, keep it simple. Yeah, you have. I mean, you never stop learning. And, and to be honest, you know, I missed a, a clanger and eight ball against uh, Lou Hightow in the first round. And, you know, it sort of keeps you your feet five. grounded. And, you, you know, you go back to the drawing board, you, you never stop learning. And I don't just mean learning the game and, and the shots and, you know, all that side of it. I mean, the mental side of it where, you know, you think you've won. And then before you know it, you know, you've not won. And you say in commentary box next to you, Ted. <laughs> well, he's made a ball. He didn't make the one ball then, so... Got a shot on the one. Yeah, you uh, you snatched defeat from the jaws of victory. Yeah, it was it was just a strange uh, strange night, really. You know, I had a lot of people here, and I think they'd all been drinking all day, and it was very loud and you know crazy out there. So you you pumped in the atmosphere, and you know you think you're all right and everything, and you know your mind gets wandered. And obviously, I was just thinking about other things at the time, like oh. They're all going to start going crazy. and That's the cardinal sin in this sport. Yeah. It's thinking about something other than the task in hand. Yeah, so it was a, you know, it was a valuable lesson learned. Nice shot there from Shane. Just rolling a little bit, though. You can see. Just ne never seems to stop rolling on the TV table. He's breaking really well, though. He's Shane. Like you say, Teddy's just sort of medium pace, really. Extension call. A little bit of a tester here. You know, he knows he should have been a little bit better on this four ball, so this makes this shot a little bit more difficult. Oh, in the heart of the pocket, clean. Not ideal on the five ball, I just wanted to miss the six, come across. That tends to happen when you lose position on one ball and the subsequent shots you also lose position on. No problem. Just losing the cue ball a little bit in this rack though, Ted, you can see. Needs to play a nice little shot here to get back in position. You can see Lee Hightower just looking on. Not really had a shot in this semi-final yet. He's actually taken a total of two shots one of them was a miss and since that miss shane van boning has sprinted down the track this for a five nil lead shane van boning he wants to become the first to win the whirlpool masters two times he leads five to nil over lou hightow the first to win the back-to-back -back whirlpool masters Wow, this is a scintillating performance from the American. This is what we've been looking for throughout this tournament is somebody to figure out the break and nobody has figured it out until now. There's nothing he can do. And what makes it uh, that much more difficult, Carl, obviously when you're sitting in your chair watching this guy, he's all loose, he's brimming with confidence and there you see Johnny Archer. Sweating the action there. The Scorpion, Johnny Archer. But yeah, just like but Lou's getting stiff over there. He's, his his arm isn't loose well, yeah. anymore. He's, this is so going to be so hard if yeah, he does what, get a what chance. You, what usually happens in all is, you know, unless Shane runs the match out, you know, usually his next shot, you you always seem to be faced with a difficult one. It's never elementary. Yeah, he's made the wing ball there. Oh, this is. He's after running the match out here, Ted. This is all Shane Van Boning now. And if the two ball sneaks past the five ball, it's not looking good. 
for the Chinese, man. I mean, it's obvious they're going for the one in the side, but it seems to also work when the one goes past the middle pocket and caroms down yeah, to where it is now. That's it. I mean, he's trying to play for the one ball in the side and obviously the wing ball, but like you said, if the one ball doesn't go in the side, it's going to go two rails and over towards that sort of corner pocket area. So as long as you get the cue ball in the middle of the table, really, you know, you can see all around the table. So you're giving yourself the best chance. And as you can see, the two ball goes past. I mean, has he, he's had one shot at the table, I think, Ted. One visit other than the lag. Is that right? One visit for Lou Hightow. He made that uh, really good long cut on the two ball. The next one was a long shot on the three, which he missed, bobbled in the jaws. And that was in rack number two. And since then, it's been break and run, break and run. And a break and run. Yeah. So four out of five of his racks, Shane Van Boning, have been break and run outs. And this is not template racking. This is not, uh, this is hand racking in a wooden rack, and uh, which means that every time the balls are different. And uh, th this is quite an accomplishment. Yeah, it can be a harsh sport at times, pool, but we've all done it. You know, Shane at the table for 6 0. Feeling great. <laughs> it is an absolute bludgeoning. We've been at this about 25 minutes, and Shane Van Boning with a 6 0 lead over China's Lu Hai Tao. Victoria Warehouse here in Manchester. What a beautiful venue for championship pool right around the corner Correct from seven. Old Trafford. Going to break, leading six racks to nil. The home of Manchester United. And here we're going to have another look at the break of Shane Van Bonen. Yeah, you see the one ball coming back round. He's really got this breakdown perfect. He's got the two and the three in the corner pocket. Clear shot on the one. The four out in the center of the table. We are, there's a real possibility that we are looking at a whitewash. Yeah, I think what Shane's done is he's obviously started off to try and make the one ball, but then he's, he's realized that the balls are racking good and the wing ball's going in. So he's changed his break to try and set up to get on the one ball in that corner. I'm looking around the arena, <laughs> wondering if uh, Darren Appleton, Mark Gray might be having a look at this. I'm sure they're back in the practice room watching it because uh, they'll be taking notes. He didn't hit that too well, Shane. There. You can see he's a bit disgusted with himself. Just pulled out the shot there. You know, when you don't quite deliver the cue right through. He's a little bit short. He's going to have to come up with a nice Thank little shot here. He might just go uh, three rails. Bit of a showman shot here. I think that's what we're going to be seeing. Screw it in. Left hand side. Three rails. Back for the six. There you see it. Lovely shot. How's that for confidence? And shot making ability. How many break and runs have we got there, Ted, now? Five break and runs. This is going to be six out of seven. 
I mean, you've got a you've got a feel for Lou Hightower. I mean, he's beat Niels Fine in his last match, arguably the best <laughs> European nine ball pool player at the minute. And he's it's come a, out tonight. It's a nine ball clinic for Shane Van Boning. He is out to a seven to nil lead over Lou Hightower. Wow. The most important shot in nine ball is the break shot because if you figure out the break, if you solve that puzzle, so much of the table and the game opens itself up and it just becomes a matter of picking off the colors. Yeah, I mean, obviously you still need to have a shot on the lowest ball, but I've been impressed with his cue ball, really. He's, he's, he's leaving the cue ball in the center of the table to give himself the best chance of a shot. So... Phenomenal breaking, phenomenal play so far from Shane. Seven straight racks, five straight breaking runouts. I mean, I mean, it's good if he if he breaks and clears here. I mean, phenomenal standard. But you sort of wanna, you sort of wanna see Lou maybe win the next two or three just to, you know, add a bit of spice to the match, don't you? Oh, the nine ball almost went in. Will oh, it go in? It might be going in now. Now look at this. One nine. Well, he'll be shooting it, Ted. Unless he plays the long bank. I mean, Lou has put his cue down. He might as well just pack it up and leave the arena. I mean, he's <laughs> got to be a little bit careful here. The nine's not actually over the pocket. You know, you can you can miss these. A it. slam dunk. It took exactly 30 minutes, and even Lou Hightower, who was on the receiving end of that beating, gives Shane Van Boning a round of applause. Van Boning into the finals with an 8 0 masterpiece. Uh, I think I only missed uh, one safety, so uh, I think that was uh, like the perfect game. Uh, I've been thinking about the break. Uh, I've been watching all the matches uh, just to make sure, uh, just to see where the key ball going when they hit and how the ball react after when they hit the, the break. So uh, I kind of figured out that, you know, you got to hit it right. Very happy to uh, be in the finals again, and especially in the Whirlpool Masters. Shane Van Boning firmly on track to defend his title and become the first to do so at the Masters. A truly amazing performance that restricted his opponent to minimal table time with six straight break and runouts. Shane's speed gives us the chance to relive the 2014 Masters final. Can we get one? Welcome back to the World Pool Masters, and here in Manchester, we have our first confirmed finalist. It's the American Shane Van Boning, determined not to surrender the title. His first Masters win came in 2014, with this remarkable display against Nikos Economopoulos. As we join the action, Van Boning led 5-2 and was at the table. What Shane's doing here from the middle diamond He's working out the bank shot for the opposite corner pocket. But obviously you've got to judge pace. Oh, he's fired it in. That's a beautiful shot. A little bit unlucky where it's landed. Nevertheless, great skill and judgment there from SVB. And there you have a look at that. Look at that. Great stuff. I think we're going to see another go here. Hey, this might be a two-way shot. What he might do is he might play a bank shot and play for the nine ball in the top pocket. Mm, he's tried to play safe. Mm, strange option, that. I thought he'd play for the bank and then shot the nine up table. Unless that's what he's played, just a, maybe a slight misjudgment there. How tough is this shot? <laughs> well, after the uh, the miss you've, you've just done, you don't want this shot. 
But it's funny, Ted, you know, sometimes you, you miss an easy shot and then your next shot you're left with a difficult one and you just stroke it in like it's over the pocket. This is a must-make shot for me. This is... Yeah, he's, he's not queuing well. You can just see he's a bit edgy. Yeah, he's in a bad way right now. Everything there was conspiring against him. The past history in the frame. The fact that the queuing was awkward. The fact that the beeps on the time clock were going. Wow, this is this is getting out of control for Nikos quickly. Yeah, we've got a 6-2 scoreline after this nine ball from Shane. And it's not looking good for Nikos for his first major tournament. Shane Van Boning has had quite a lot more success on the big stage than Nick Economopoulos. I remember before I won the World 8-Ball Championships, you know, you're just desperate to win the tournament, just so you've, not because you want to be world champion, but more so you've, you've done it then, your name's on the trophy, you know, that never gets taken away from you, and if you're ever put in that situation again, you feel like you can handle it. So, you know, this is a big match for Nikos. Yeah, and it's a big opportunity for him to uh, further his career. He got a benefit of a dry break. Oh, that was a beautiful shot. He's really attacked at that one. That was not an easy shot. That's a confidence builder right there. I mean, look at this for a shot. Spartacus trying to make something happen. Yeah, he's got to come with another few good shots here, though, because, as you can see, the five ball is tied up. And where the four ball is, it's not easy to get from the four to the five. the shot right here and where the cue ball has landed I think he has to be mindful stretching over the table not to make contact with the three balls down here yeah he's just coming over the side of the table to see where he wants to land because if he comes too low then the cue balls run into the nine and sort of away from the seven so you know this one's got to be this one has to be perfect and six two down it's 50 times harder Brendan Moore, very experienced Q Sports referee, in perfect position to make sure that the the T-shirt of Economopolis doesn't illegally contact any of those balls. Yeah, you can just see him bending down. His shirt must be very close. Yeah, he's tried to come on the other side of the table. Needs a good flick here. No. Now he's going to have to come with a. A fantastic positional shot. Oh, is he going to lock him up behind the nine ball? Wow, he he is faced with some decisions now. This is critical stuff. Looks like he's attacking, guys. I don't blame him. you got to make something happen. Oh. Come on. I'm sorry, I thought he'd missed that. I'm shocked that one went in. Oh, and he was unfortunate to hit the knuckle there of the side pocket. Now he's got his extender on. Carl, what do you what do you choose here? Well, I mean, yeah, it's one of them situations. Do you fire at a bank and swing the cue ball around, or do you just split the balls and play safe? I don't blame him for that. He's quite good at that shot, to be fair. Always going to be the, the crunch ball. Getting position off that five, and he just couldn't quite do it. 
I think he might have just left the edge here. If he's left the edge, he's going to chip this up towards the eight. Yeah, there you see it. Just leave distance. Lovely pace there from Shane. <laughs> Nikos might have to fire at a bank here. Unless he can chip it thin into the eight and send the cue ball back around the table. So be careful you don't make the eight here and leave the seven on the top rail. Oh, he's hit it way too far. He's tried to play safe there. That is a terrible shot. And that, I think, is the end of Nikos's Whirlpool Masters final. Well, unless he pulls off a miracle comeback, Shane has allowed a few comebacks in all three of his matches. So we're not going to pencil in the final rack just yet. He played a nice shot there, to be fair. I thought he was a lot straighter than what he was. Played like a stun run through the left-hand side. Absolutely perfect. In 2005, Raj Hundal came back from nowhere to beat Rodney Morris 8-7 in the World Masters final when it was held in Doncaster. Economopolis needs something equally astounding. And the reason? He trails by seven racks to two. One more for Van Boning, and he will be crowned champion. What a win for this would be for Shane Van Boning, and who knows, it could open up the floodgates for even bigger things such as, uh, you know, the world championship. Reasonable break, one ball in the open. So if he gets past this one ball, that could be it. Yeah, he'll fire at this one. This is, you'll see some action with the cue ball there. Seven two up, he knows he can fire this one in, try and juice the cue ball up. And there you oh, see, yeah. look at this. Oh, that oh, is a generous nudge. What a way to set out the beginning of the end. Yeah, that was a great pot, that. You can only compare like with like. Since this tournament went to a race to eight, best of 15 in the final, that was in 2003. Since then, the most one-sided final we've had, 2010 in Las Vegas at the Riviera Hotel and Casino, when Dennis Okolo defeated Turu Korobayashi from Japan, 8-3. Could we be seeing a new record set? He's still got to come in another good shot here. And this is a beautiful shot he's played there. Wow, oh, he's feeling it now. Just run on a little bit, though. He'd have liked that to have held up another cue ball. Another look at this. Look at the cue ball there. Spinning back. Right inside, taking to effect off the cushion. Right up for the four ball. Yeah, he's playing for the six in the side. Well, he's he's feeling untouchable right now. There's not going to be any lapse in concentration anymore. Yeah, he knows this is this is practically match ball queuing over the seven. Heart of the pocket. Anyone who knows anything about pool has been saying it's only a matter of time before Shane Van Boning translate his American form onto the international stage and becomes a, a major champion. He's just about to do it. Well, that'll be the end of that chatter on the internet. Can he ever win overseas? Yeah, he's got to come in another shot here, though. He's landed a bit straight on the eight. Oh, he had a bit of He had enough angle. He milked that one. This nine ball to win the Party Poker World Pool Masters Championship. It was a valiant effort by Nikos Economopoulos. He broke beautifully throughout the tournament, but in the end, he had to play second fiddle to a man who played like a symphony orchestra. Shane Van Boning beats Nikos Economopoulos 8-2.
He is the Party Poker Whirlpool Masters Champion of 2014. There can be no doubt, Shane Van Boning remains the man to beat in the Masters. He flew into Manchester as the defending champion and desperately wants to fly out with the silverware. But who will he play in the final? That issue will be settled in our next programme as Mark Gray takes on Darren Appleton in the second semi-final of the Party Poker World Pool Masters.